I would like to share with you the number one mistake that beginners make when they start watercolour painting. So, shall we get started? I'm using Daniel Smith's masking fluid just to mask out the lighthouse. And it comes with these plastic applicators that you put on the spout here. And you just squeeze the bottle and apply the masking fluid. So I'm just masking out the lighthouse. This is step one and a few of the surrounding sort of outbuildings, etc. And once you're finished, just rinse out the applicator and put the top back on the masking fluid and allow your masking fluid to dry naturally. I'm painting the sky now with a large mop brush with plenty of clean water. And I'm loading the brush with the yellow and raw sienna mix and painting this color wet and wet on the horizon. I'm loading my brush now with the pink. I'm painting it wet and wet just above the yellow and it sort of seeps into the yellow and I'm gonna tilt so it blends naturally on the paper. I've loaded my brush now and I'm painting the blue violet wet into wet while I'm tilting as well to allow the colors to blend on the paper. I'm swishing in more of that blue violet there into the middle of the sky. I've mixed up a slightly thicker paint here to paint a darker violet wash at the top of the sky. I'm using my size eight mop brush to paint damp into wet the sort of cloud shadows in the middle of the sky making smaller marks as they go towards the horizon. I'm going to allow the painting to dry. And this is one of the most important lessons I share with my beginner students. You always have to allow your paintings to dry. If you don't, all sorts of things happen. You lose control for a start, but your colours will get muddy and you'll get cauliflowers and just all sorts of sort of watermarks in your paintings where you don't need them, especially somewhere in your sky. And not knowing this and not knowing why it happens can be so frustrating. So I'm sharing this with you now. Allow your paintings to dry thoroughly. And I'm starting off now wet on dry using my size eight mop brush and painting the lightest color first. That's the sort of mid orange color here. And I'm adding a pinch of the pink and just pushing it in wet in wet. So you get a kind of a lovely variety of colors, not just one flat color. I'm just loading my brush each time and just painting a few strokes, carefully sort of painting the outside edges of these sort of cliffs there just to create some sort of texture and ruggedness there. And again, each time sort of really load that brush, change the colors, paint wet in wet and sort of just keep everything sort of moving. Don't labor an area. That's the trick to watercolor. Almost paint an area once if you can. Keep everything fresh. Really load that brush. Have plenty of paint on your brush. So I'm just working my way down to the bottom of the cliffs here using the tip of the brush. So I'm continuing on now with the rocks here on the seashore on the left-hand side. Again, varying the colors. What I'm doing now is I'm carefully painting the sea around the rocks with a flat one inch brush just to make sure I cover all this area. So I'm starting off with the light colors first and it's basically reflecting the sort of horizon colors using the yellow with a pinch of the raw sienna using a size eight brush, round brush here. And I'm just kind of copying the photograph, but also copying my sky and how my sky turned out. So it looks like a good sort of reflection of that sky. So using the pink now, painting wet into wet, um, just below that yellow there. And just diluting my brush a little bit there as I go around that rock to the right. And then adding some more of that pinky color, wet into wet. As you can see, it's quite a pale pink color. So I've added water to make it paler and adding a little bit here on the left hand side as well, wet into wet with a size eight brush. 
I've rinsed my brush and I've loaded the brush with the violet. This time I've taken the excess paint off on the paper towel. So I'm painting damp into wet. Added a touch more blue now, ultramarine on its own, painting damp into damp using the size 8 mop brush. So it's a stronger tone of value, it's in the foreground and it creates depth in your painting by painting these darker values. And just sort of sweeping it across now to create sort of ripples in the water. So just working my way down again with that ultramarine, it's probably got about 5% phthalo blue in there and the paint is literally hardly any water in there. I'm using the dampness of the paper to paint with as well, painting a little bit of reflection underneath the rocks here, still using the size eight mop brush, painting the gaps in between the rocks, mostly with that ultramarine, just using horizontal brush strokes, adding a little bit of the pink there, damp into damp with my size eight brush and adding a little bit more of a stronger tonal value here using just literally ultramarine straight from my freshly squeezed paint, just using the damp of my brush and the damp of the paper just to paint a few more darker marks, damp into damp. So again, and most importantly, I'm going to allow my painting to dry. So I'm painting wet on dry with my size eight mop brush. I'm sort of carefully painting around the edge of the cliff tops here. As you can see from the photograph, you've got that lovely sort of orangey light edge and then you've got the shadow colors. Now I'm not gonna paint all of the details here. It's quite an impressionistic style of painting. I'm just gonna leave little sort of gaps here and there for the light areas on the cliffs where the sun has sort of caught it. And of course, I'm going to use the plastic card as well. So at the moment, the paint is damp. So I don't want to wait too long because I want to swipe this paint to create the look of rocks, which I will talk you through. I'll also show you a little bit later that if you wait too long and the paint has dried, I've got a remedy for that. So it's quite a nice technique. So hopefully that will help if you do have a problem if it dries too quickly. So what I'm doing now is I'm using the plastic card. So I've painted about half of those cliff tops. So I don't want to wait too long. So I'm swiping. Swipe once and I would suggest practicing this and I will put a link in the description of a plastic card tutorial that I published a while back. But um, what you don't want to do is swipe too early when the paint's too wet because it all runs back in on itself. And obviously, if you waited too long, it won't move. So it's that sort of window of opportunity. But obviously, I said earlier, if it does dry, I can show you what to do if that happens. So as you can see, I don't want too light a mark here. I just want to create some sort of sort of mid to dark tone rocks here and to sort of shape them a little bit. So I'm just swiping sort of big rocks, small rocks, etc., to really create textures 
and sort of details. I'm using a wax crayon um, to create a little bit of a wax resist. So where I rub this wax crayon on, if I, when I paint the watercolour on, it will resist it. And it'll create some sort of shadow areas and textures. And it's quite a nice way or an alternative way of creating the look that I've created with the plastic card. And you may prefer it. What I would say about either technique, practice them first. Sometimes you can be a bit heavy handed with the wax and it's not easy to remove it. Just adding a few more dark marks to the bottom of the cliffs. And I'm going to start painting some of the individual rocks here on the sort of shoreline and in the sea, painting wet on dry using those dark colours. Remember, you can use ultramarine and red, ultramarine and pink, or even Payne's grey with red or pink. So I'm just working my way along. And as I come nearer to the foreground, the rocks will get bigger, which is what they do in the photograph as well. And it's a great way of creating depth in the painting. I'm just using some of the darks to fill in some of the negative spaces. That's the spaces between the rocks. And I'm painting this damp into damp with my size 8 mop brush. I'm painting some shadows on these rocks in the water using a little bit of Payne's Grey actually with a pinch of the quinacridone pink using the size 8 brush and painting in some reflections directly underneath wet on dry just painting a few more of these smaller rocks here and there and remember that when they're further away they're so much smaller and swiping off now with my plastic cards some of those smaller rocks just here and there <laughs> I've mixed up some ultramarine with a little bit of the quinacridone pink with a pinch of yellow. I've turned my painting sideways using the size 4 brush. I'm painting wet on dry, a very thin line over the pencil line. And it's just to create some distance here on the horizon. And then I'm using a clean damp brush just to blend that line top and bottom. Now I am wetting some of the areas at the bottom of the cliff where it's very dark and where you may have found that your card swiping didn't work because it was too dry. So you can re-wet the area, wait a little bit and then try swiping again. And this time, hopefully it should work. And as you can see, I'm just sort of adding a few more rock shapes here and there, especially around the sort of shoreline there at the bottom of the cliffs. And again, I'm going to allow my painting to dry. Once the painting is dry, I am removing the masking fluid. I'm using my size four round brush and I'm painting the left hand side of the lighthouse wet on dry with this lovely shadow color. So I'm keeping it to the left there 
and I'm going to add a few little details and markings to describe the lighthouse. But because it's so small and far away, I can't really see that much detail. So I'm just giving an impression using the tip of my brush, keeping a lot of the details to the left hand side, painting the mast here wet on dry just above there. And also some of the details to the right hand side of the lighthouse and a little bit further right as well, still using that same colour. And I'm going to allow the painting to dry once more. I've added a touch more blue to the colour and just adding a few more darks and details here to the lighthouse using the tip of my size four round brush. As you can see here, I've kept everything super simple and just adding a few details to the building at the bottom of the lighthouse there and just adding a few more details on the top of the cliff top here and there using my size four round brush. I'm just adding a few more darks and details to the lighthouse to finish off this stage. And I'm going to allow my painting to dry once more. What I'm doing now is I've mixed up some white with the blue violet, that's the ultramarine and pink. And I'm also I'm gonna add some white to the orange and that's the red and the yellow. And I'm gonna add some highlights to the water, which is what I'm doing now, painting wet on dry. I'm also gonna give my painting a spatter. This is really helpful, especially if you've lost your light in your painting. Using my size four round brush. So I'm actually using some white on its own as well, just to create some light here, right at the bottom of the cliffs. And it really sort of defines the water against the dark of the cliffs here as well. I thought it'd be quite nice to have a little spatter on the rock. So I'm just using the white on its own with my size four round brush. I'm also spattering some orange on the cliffs here using the size four brush. That's the white mixed with the red and yellow and just spattering it at the bottom. You may want to use some paper towel to protect your water and sky. I'm also painting wet on dry the edge of the cliffs here using my size four brush. And it's just to create some more lighter areas using the red yellow mixed together with the white gouache there. And it's really good sometimes having a tube of white gouache or white watercolor to add to your watercolor paints just to get back some of those lights that you may have lost. I'm a very loose painter and sometimes I lose my light just because of how I paint and I have to go back and just get a few more lights using the white. So I'm finishing off with a little spatter at the bottom of the cliff tops using a few more sort of orange highlights on the rocks in the foreground to add a bit of warmth and light as well. And I am using white on its own and I'm just sort of tidying up my horizon. I had a little bleed there. So again, this is a great reason to have a tube of white gouache handy. So I'm just tidying up the horizon, wet on dry with my size four round brush. And I'm using some of that white to create some highlights in the sea here and there. So I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial and that you found it helpful, especially allowing your paintings to dry. And just to say, this is the finished painting here and I'm quite pleased with it. I just love that glow of the sun and the light and the colours of the sky in the sea. And of course, I'd love you to join me on my retreat to paint something like this as well, hopefully, as we go and visit this amazing location in Spain. And remember, details about the retreat can be found in the description below. Places are going fast. And if you have any queries or questions about the retreat, contact details for Uptrek who are organising the retreat can be found in the description below and they will be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy painting. Bye for now.